Today, we are going to discuss two very important topics you should know as a 360 VR content creator. First, you need to understand not all AK360 videos are the same. The final clarity of your 360 video is up to a number of factors. Resolution, frame rate, bit rate, dynamic range, compression, rendering pipeline, screen resolution, screen pixel structure, and etc. In this video, we will introduce benchmarking to and integration tests, so you can use it to make sure that your source video from the camera is in its highest quality possible. And your whole production pipeline is not dropping information. And then we will discuss why you need an 8K resolution 360 video for a 3K screen. What is super sampling or multi sampling and how it will affect your video quality. This video will jump up with useful knowledge. So if you are ready, go grab a cup of coffee and come join me and see why from this bit. So let's talk about the visited timeline. So I know that there's a huge mistake. Imagine that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, think about quality VR video. Uh, is, uh, we believe there's three parts. One, uh, creation or capturing, but that, that's one part. Then is the a delivery, how you uh, deliver the content to your audience. And then at the audience side, you need a player to, to render these videos. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, from uh, creation, delivery to uh, rendering. Mm -hmm. So this bit, we take care of delivery and the rendering. Mm -hmm. So the, all the creative job is done by all the creators. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, so for us, we, our job is to keep the quality, don't lose bits. Uh, when people, uh, because content creators spend a lot of time to make good content, so our responsibility is to try to keep them. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually is pretty hard to keep the quality. Mm -hmm. um, from the delivery to rendering, there are many, many steps. And every step, if you drop uh, information, you drop it. So we have to be really careful every, every step. Um, Let's talk about capture stage. So you mentioned about you should always shot in 8K, 60 frames per second. Can you go into detail of that? Um, yeah, so. So when we talk about quality of capturing, there are many different like parameters, and the resolution is one of them. is really important, mm -hmm. and also the frame rate. Uh, so we, we we strongly recommend people capture 8K resolution. Mm -hmm. If it's stereo, that's even better. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if it's a motion scene, capture at a higher frame rate. So I would recommend you capture for stereo scenes. You capture 8K by 8K means uh, 8K per eye mm -hmm. at 30 frames per second. And if okay. you are capturing a motion scene, you capture 6K stereo at 60 FPS. That could be a like kind of um, like a reference choice you can think about. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, of course, you also need to pay attention to the color, dynamic range, also uh, uh, lighting. Uh, that uh, I think we will not be able to cover all this aspect today. But for resolution, yeah, go higher, frame rate go higher as possible. Yeah. And, and the middle part, you, you mentioned about in a whole production, there's a lot of time you're losing resolution, losing sharpness, and losing color as well, dynamic range. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, every step, like every filter, every processing you apply to a video, you run the risk, you, you lose some information, you lower the quality. Um, so it, it's really hard you, uh, for me to look into every step in the pipeline, but I think it's a good practice. Um, um, we can use some integration tests, for example, giving a sample video and you look at the final video and compare if you lose quality. So for this purpose, actually, we uh, spend some time, we make a kind of like a benchmark video uh, to help people to, to, to tell the difference. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. So um, I was really uh, happy to introduce the, the new chart video we, we made uh, for the community. Tell us a little bit about that, how to use your new chart video to make sure that we don't lose information in post-processing. Yes. Um, so this is a really short video we made. Um, so first of all, uh, if you look at uh, 
this video uh, and then play the, this video is like has a lot of details also there's a few moving parts mm -hmm. uh, let me explain this video a little bit okay. so first you see a lot of lines uh, these lines tell you the the latitude and the longitude when when you uh, look at the, the the 360 videos mm -hmm. So one usage will be like when you uh, look at this video in Gear VR, mm -hmm. you can tell what's the field view. So you can just read the field view mm -hmm. from these numbers. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, you can tell easily from, from this chart if you play it. Mm -hmm. uh, Gear VR has about a 90 degree horizontal field view mm -hmm. uh, overall. And uh, your eyes see about 70 degree mm -hmm. uh, field view horizontally. Mm -hmm. And so that's part one. So also we include a lot of like uh, images with details. For example, eye charts, mm -hmm. just like you, you did a vision test, you can tell like which line you can read. Then you can tell, oh, this is a bad player, this is a good player, or it's a good video, it's a bad video. Mm -hmm. You can tell from the, 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 the eye chart. Also, we put a human face. What about the chart next to the eye charge? Oh, the yeah, charge? Yeah, that's a restoration chart. Mm -hmm. It's kind of typical people use that to measure the camera quality. Mm -hmm. So we can use that to measure the player quality as well. Mm -hmm. So different How? from the, the eye charts, like they have a lot of directional lines. Mm -hmm. So because the many players or camera, they have different resolution in different directions. Mm -hmm. So you can look into this line and read the numbers. For example, in one player, you can read, oh, I can read the line 10. Then that's kind of, it's good. Mm -hmm. And if there's another player can read nine, like 16, that's mm -hmm. much better. And you can tell from different directions. So that's good, like you can read from the, from the video. Mm -hmm. And then I put uh, faces and the uh, text. Mm -hmm. uh, especially for VR video, you want to be immersive. You want to watch other people and read text from VR videos. Mm -hmm. And the human eyes are really sensitive to, to human face. If you get a blurry face, people won't be happy. Mm -hmm. Also, if you look in people's eyes, you need to see the reflection. You need to see the gaze. If you like blur the eyes, then you lose a connection with the audience. Mm -hmm. And the same thing for the text. If you go to a conference, you need to read the text on the screen. Mm -hmm. And here we put uh, phones of different size. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can tell oh, which line you can read and you can tell the quality immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you put on, when you up, so if you are interested in any player, mm -hmm. just upload or like side load the, the video mm -hmm. to that player. You can play it and you can watch your quality. What about the tell us the, the color charge? You talk about bending. Yes, right? yes, yes. Sorry, I missed that. So, uh, in addition to resolution, also the dynamic range, also color is really important for playback, also for the content creation. Uh, we see a lot of bad player, also the creation, uh, process processing pipeline. Sometimes they, they create some bending effects because they they do not have enough level or like like intensity to, to keep the really smooth the, 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 the gradient. So we put the gradient in this restriction chart. Mm -hmm. So the, the gradient should look smooth after all the processing and the rendering. Mm -hmm. So you should always check that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say that if a camera have a 12 stop of dynamic range, mm -hmm. yeah. you should see like 12 stop mm -hmm. at the end from the player. Yeah, it should be smooth. Be smooth. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you get some bending, some, something's wrong. Okay, uh, what would causing bending besides compression, like compression from transcoding? What other thing would cause bending? A lot of steps. For example, if you do, for example, sometimes you want to adjust the contrast in your video, mm -hmm. then you run risk about creating bendings, mm -hmm. and sometimes you run uh, denoising. For example, you, you shoot at night, mm -hmm. and you do denoising, then there's really uh, creating bendings, mm -hmm. and also uh, compression, of course. Also, when you save the export the video, uh, sometimes you need to choose uh, some color space you want to use. Mm -hmm. Then you run the risk of the bending as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and also from the player side, uh, player side have to take every value from every pixel mm -hmm. and render them carefully. If you like lose some intensity precision, mm -hmm. then you create bendings as well. Okay. So this chart is not only for the end user, you can also use that for post-production, right? So each yeah. time you put that next to your video, run all your plug-in, color correction onto the chart. If you don't see any bending, any resolution loss, meaning your processing is good. But if not, the problem is not at players, actually in your post pipeline. Yes, okay, yes. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Uh, what other thing? Oh yeah, let's talk about the 6K versus 8K versus 4, 4K. Like people said that you cannot really tell different because the headset maxed out in 4K. 
Can you go into detail of that? Yeah, th th this is really uh, interesting and uh, I think it's a really important question. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's hard to, sometimes people say, oh, I didn't see a difference between 4K and 8K. That's because 8K and 4K is just one number of many quality like uh, perspectives. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you get the 8K video, but the camera quality is, is crappy, mm -hmm. Even though it's 8K, it's blurry. So of course you cannot tell the difference between 4K and 8K. So let's assume everything is done properly, as we just said, like all the post-processing, camera is good. Then you should be able to tell difference, like obviously from headset nowadays. This headset is able to render 8K uh, 360. And uh, uh, we also, we can use this chart. To, we can do side by side 4K and 8K. People can tell difference, like obviously, especially we look at the face, look at text, people see a difference. Yeah. Um, so there's a question I know people will say, oh, this phone only have, or the has only have 3K Screen. screens. Yeah, how can, you do 6K how can we do 6K and 8K, right? Yeah. So first thing people need to understand in VR videos is that VR video is 360 degree. So it's a whole sphere. Mm -hmm. And in terms of video, it's a, it's a rectangle video, as usually the, the two by one ratio. And means this is 360 degree uh, horizontally, mm -hmm. and this is 180 degree vertically. Mm -hmm. And when we say 8K video, we mean this is 8K, this is 4K. But this is not you see uh, in your screen. Mm -hmm. In your screen, you only see a small portion of the field view because the field view usually is only 90 degree horizontally, or even less. Sometimes it's 70 degree. Mm -hmm. So the resolution here should be consistent with your phone resolution or, or, or VR has a resolution. Mm -hmm. For example, for gear VR and the wide focus, the resolution for this field view is about 1.5K. Mm -hmm. So that's what you see from the headset. Mm -hmm. So 1.5K for 90 degree means it's about 6K for the whole 360 degree. Mm -hmm. So that's one. So. Then it's a not good point. Say, oh, people say since it's sixty degree, uh, a six K resolution, where come the eight K resolution? Mm -hmm. So that's come out another really important point for rendering. Mm -hmm. uh, that's called multiple sampling. So different from TVs. For example, you have a TV, mm -hmm. and on the TV you have many pixels, right? Mm -hmm. And now you have a video you try to render to the TV. Mm -hmm. For TV, you can perfectly match a pixel in a, in a video to a pixel on the TV, mm -hmm. one by one matching, because mm -hmm. that's still, it's, mm -hmm. it's not moving on. But for VR, for VR, say you have a screen here, mm -hmm. and uh, when, you, when you turn your head around, actually you're moving the screen over the, the, the whole sphere. Right? Mm -hmm. You're moving this window back and forth, and sometimes you rotate it. Yeah. So the pixel in your video and the pixel of your screen is not always matched. It's mm -hmm. not still. It's moving around. Yeah. So think about you have a big pixel like this one. It's a, it's a screen pixel. Mm -hmm. Very often, your, your content pixel is somewhere here. Mm -hmm. It's not a one one matching. So but for, for rendering, we need to tell oh, what color we should render for this pixel. Mm -hmm. But is this pixel be covered by many different like like video pixels? Mm -hmm. And if you give a high resolution pixel um, resolution for these um, videos, we can render the color of this pixel a lot more accurate. Because for example, this one you only cover the little corner, mm -hmm. and this one cover another corner. So we'll add all them up together to calculate what's the resolution, what's the color for these pixels. So higher, like super simple, is is better for for the rendering. But is that also the represent the bit rate? Um, yeah, bit rate is more about like when when you see um, in the image, mm -hmm. you see a, a sharp edge. For example, this sharp edge. Mm -hmm. If you low have low bit rate, very likely when you do compression, mm -hmm. you blur them out. Okay. So that's a kind of separate issues. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but that's really good, impo really important points. Like when when we talk about AK resolution, make sure you export at a decent um, bit rate. And what is the recommended um, for bit rate? It's really uh, varies from scene to scene. Uh, I have seen like. 20 Mbps is good enough for some AK videos, for them some still like 
uh, nothing is moving and there's no texture, then maybe 20 or 30 is enough. Okay. But I think typically you should see that maybe 100, 200 Mbps. Okay. And uh, for this big service, we uh, set a maximum at 200 Mbps. Okay. Uh, but if you have if you have some really awesome videos and you need a m more yeah. MVPS, uh, you sh you can talk to us. So what is the benefit if I give you two hundred MP MBPS beside a bigger file to file to download? Uh, what benefit I have? Uh, the benefit would be um, when you look at the video, uh -huh. it will be sharper, and uh, the face will more creepy, oh, okay. crispy. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So um, so that's another like in addition to resolution. Bit rate is as important. Mm -hmm. So that's another like a little complicated, but the, the final conclusion as we observe, like for existing headset, like these three headsets, mm -hmm. fit them AK is, is perfect. Okay. This concludes the second part of this series. The third part, I will show you how I use the Visbit benchmarking chart video to test my post-production pipeline to make sure we don't lose too much information during post. If you want to learn more, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to keep up to date to the latest info in 360 video production. I will be teaching a 360 masterclass in New York City, Chicago, and Los Angeles. Click the link in the description for more information. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumb up. Comment below if you have any question, and I will do my best to answer and help you with 360 Productions as much as I can. And I will see you next time.